Hello everyone, this video is going to go over a simple way to code a run cutter fourth order scheme for a single differential equation. I'm not going to talk about how to derive the run cutter system or how it works or what it's for. I'm just going to talk about a way to code it. Uh, this code is available on firesciencetools.com. I'll put the, the link in the, in the description below. So these types of scripts, I usually start with an introduction, so I have a little introduction and disclaimer, and then uh, a list of the relevant variables that are used in the in the code, and then the outputs for the code, and then a description, an example input for the code itself. So an inline function that could be used, and then uh, sample values for the input parameters. So that way you can. I, I can easily go back and, and make the code run if I've modified it in some way. Uh, then the date for when this is this is a rather older script I wrote several years ago. So the script starts here. We start it with our usual clear all, close all, CLC. And then uh, we want to create an inline function for the equation we want to use. The reason we do this is because if you've looked at the run to cut a code or the scheme you use, you're going to be calling this function or evaluating the same equation multiple times uh, during each iteration. So if you create an inline function, you only have to modify the equation in one spot rather than having to change it multiple times in your script. So this equation, f underscore dt, uh, using, it uses the inline function as a MATLAB function, and then uh, the equation is here. So it's a pretty simple equation. We have H times the change in temperature, T infinity minus T, times time divided by tau rho C, and then we're defining the order in which we're going to input the variables after that. You don't have to do this, but it, if you don't, it's sometimes hard to tell which, which variables need to go in which order, and if you get them messed up, then it's really annoying. Then once we have that set, you have your equation. Whatever your equation needs to be, you can change it in, on this line. And then you want to define your input parameters. So uh, you're defining a dt. The change in, change in time for each iteration of the loop is going to be uh, 0.1 seconds. Uh, n is a counter. Initial, time, initial temperature is t1. We're going to make a t array, array of temperatures. So the first one we're going to call is, is ambient temperature 293. 25 degrees Celsius or 293 Kelvin. We're going to make a, a T infinity, an ambient temperature. I believe this code was written to for heat transfer through a plate. And so on one side you have one temperature, or the plate started out at an initial temperature and then you have an a, a, uh, ambient temperature outside of it, so that's going to be 150 degrees above, or 150 C, so we're going to convert that to Kelvin. And we're going to, T2 is the final temperature, we're going to see how long it takes to get, for the plate to get to this, this temperature. And we're going to call T1 our, 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 our DT, so instead of starting at zero, we're going to start at DT. I don't know why I did that, but it must have seemed reasonable at the time. Tau, rho, C, and H are defined, and then this while loop is going to begin our run to cut a scheme. So we're going to say while the temperature uh, that we're solving for is less than or equal to our final temperature that we define, then we're going to keep running this loop. And so if you've looked, if, if you look on, online, you can Google run to cut a fourth order and it'll give you a, a numeric scheme. You're basically going to solve for four Ks. And so I've, I've labeled them K1, K2, K3, and K4. And in these Ks, you're going to evaluate your inline, your function, and multiply it by dt. So we're evaluating our inline function with initially the initial input parameters, and then the temperature and the time are going to change through each loop. So that's why they have uh, counter counters to tell which which part of the array you're going to use in each individual calculation. So for K1, it's straightforward. You use your initial parameters. Then you're going to calculate, uh, this is a kind of a predictor script where you're looking at slopes. 
and just cut it looks at slopes. So you're gonna you're gonna calculate a time for K2 and a temperature for K2, and then use those values in the K2 calculation. Then you're gonna do the same thing for the K3 and calculate your K3, and the same thing for K4, and then calculate your K4. And then you're gonna go down here and calculate your change in temperature for this this iteration or this this delta t. So this change in time is, is going to generate this change in temperature. And so to do that you're going to do uh, 1 6 times k1 plus 2 times k2 plus 2 times k3 plus 2 times k4. And then you're going to calculate your, your new temperature is the old temperature plus the change in temperature for this iteration. And then we're going to redefine our, our time for the next time step and then increase our counter by one and then end the script. And then so to find out how long it takes for our our our, our material to increase to the second temperature, we're gonna we're gonna calculate or we're gonna yeah, we're gonna calculate the max in T. So we're gonna write this to the command window. And then we're gonna plot the results. Simple plotting scheme. And then we're gonna transpose the matrices because we uh, variables are or or are generated row then column, right? Your first first variable is changing row and then it's changing column. So this this say this T of N, you'll have a whole bunch of, of rows. And so maybe I want to transpose those so that they're easier to look at. Alright, so if I run this script, I can run it and I will get a uh, an output looks like this. You can see the temperature go up until it reaches our finest temperature, and then the script ends. If I look at the MATLAB command window, I can see that it took uh, 6.08 seconds for the, the, the material to reach whatever temperature I was looking at. And so the code runs. And then if you want to modify it for something else, you would, you would just need to change this inline function and uh, you wouldn't really, you won't, you don't have to mess with this uh, loop scheme, um, and so that's the handy bit of using uh, an inline function to to write a run to cut a scheme, or any type of scheme that is solving the same equation multiple times, or if you just want all of the equations to be listed at the top of your script so you don't have to hunt through them in the in the the MATLAB script, then you can write them all as inline functions at the top of the script. Sometimes I do that as well. All right. Uh, if you want to solve multiple equations using runs of fourth order, uh, it's not particularly that much harder. You just start having to solve for multiple k's, and it becomes a kind of a, a exercise in in organization. But uh, I hope you found this useful, and have a good day.